Hey everyone, are you also wondering about the ongoing earthquake swarms in Idaho? Near Stanley, that's just a few hours from Boise, Idaho. Well, you're not alone. I've been really wondering since I saw that. So over the past few days, more than 20 earthquakes have rattled this remote area and hundreds more have occurred over the past year. So some have even reached magnitudes above 3.5 and there's no fracking in this area. So what's going on there? We have to go to the bottom of this phenomenon and figure out what caused it and what it could mean. And the big question could this be the leaf that triggers the avalanche? Because this is a significant earthquake swarm. It must come from somewhere. So could this swarm of quakes that we see there in Idaho, in the middle of the Idaho mountains, could this actually help unleash catastrophic megathrust earthquakes on the Cascadia subduction zone? This sounds crazy, and maybe it is crazy, but there's scientific evidence that it is possible. So let's dive into that. To answer that, we first need to understand the geological setting that is taking place there. Idaho sits on the eastern edge of the Basin and Range Province. That's a massive region that is stretching from Utah to Nevada and Southern Oregon, where the North American plate is being pulled apart. So this extension creates normal faults. Normal. <laughs> Which fault is normal? They're all well, they are normal, but for us, they're not like, oh yeah, no problem. So normal faults where blocks of crust drop down as the land stretches. In 2020, this tectonic system, this tectonic stretching suddenly came into the spotlight when a magnitude, and now listen guys, 6.5 earthquake struck near Stanley, Idaho. So a lot of people tell me, move away from the West Coast, the big one's coming. Imagine someone moves away from the West Coast to Idaho to be safe of earthquakes, and then the home gets destroyed by a 6.5 in the Idaho mountains. This is absolutely crazy. So this was the largest quake in the state history. And since that event, and now look at that number, over 4,000 aftershocks have been recorded in the same area. Many of the earthquakes that we're seeing today are still part of this ongoing aftershock sequence. More than five years later, this is absolutely crazy. But here's what's surprising, if you haven't been surprised by that yet. That 2020 earthquake didn't rupture the well-known sawtooth fault, which has been considered one of Idaho's most dangerous faults. Instead, it occurred on a previously unknown fault. That could suggest that the region's fault network is more complex than we thought. And that leads us to today's earthquake swarm. In just the last few days, the earthquakes have been clustering again near the 2020 rupture zone. The earthquakes aren't super huge or large. Most are between magnitude 2 and 3.5, but their frequency and the location raised a question why right now? The most likely explanation is a combination of tectonic stress adjustment and delayed aftershocks, although this sounds crazy five years later. After a large earthquake, I'll explain that. The crust takes time, sometimes years to settle. And faults nearby, they feel changes in stress. Some become quieter because of that and others become more active. And right now, central Idaho is shifting again. But all this leads to a bigger, more dramatic question. Could these shifts, these tiny earthquakes in Idaho, somehow influence the big monster, the Cascadia subduction zone that is hundreds of miles to the west? Could this be the small trigger, the final nudge, that releases a much larger devastating event in the Pacific Northwest. Let's explore that. The Cascadia subduction zone is one of the most dangerous fault lines in North America, part of the Pacific Ring of Fire. It stretches from North California 
through Oregon, Washington, until British Columbia. This is where the Juan de Fuca plate is diving underneath the North American plate as abduction zone. And the fault is currently locked and loaded. It's silently storing stress that will one day be released in a magnitude eight or nine or even higher earthquake. Scientists say this is the earthquake that will rip open the Pacific Northwest, that will destroy the Pacific Northwest. We know that the Cascadia Fault is under pressure. In fact, we also know from geological evidence that it has produced massive earthquakes every 250 to 500 years, and the last one in the year 1700. So that's why many people say we're overdue. So here's the theory. If Cascadia is already on the edge of failure, could even a small stress change from far inland trigger it? In theory, yes. We've heard that theory for the San Andreas Fault. There's many other fault that run parallel, but also vertically towards the fault. They could trigger the big one. This is called remote triggering. Scientists have documented, so there's the evidence, cases where large earthquakes, like in Alaska in 2002, the Denali quake, have triggered seismic activity thousands of miles away. But there's a catch. Those triggering events were usually magnitude 7 or higher. They sent strong surface waves rippling across the continent. So the current Idaho swarm, not even close. Right now, these are mostly magnitude two and three quakes. They release millions of times less energy than what's needed to influence a deep locked subduction zone. Whew. Thankfully, right? Or not? Most importantly, they are not aligned with the stress direction of Cascadia. Idaho's crust is pulling apart. Cascadia is being crushed to get crushed together and underneath. Also, there is thankfully a massive geographic barrier, the Blue Mountains and the High Lava Plains. They act as a somewhat seismic sponge between inland Idaho and coastal Oregon. So while we can never say never when it comes to geophysics, and yes, if Cascadia were already right on the edge, even a tiny nudge could much could matter. This scenario, thankfully, is so unlikely, it doesn't even register as a credible concern in modern hazard models. So in other words, yes, a theoretical domino effect scenario, the Idaho swarm could be the leaf that triggers the avalanche, but only if that avalanche was already ready to fall and cracked. And even then, it would be a one in a billion moment. But these moments happen. If you look at Switzerland, the landslide that destroyed Blatten, they say this is a one in a millennium event. They didn't think that this catastrophic ex extent would happen. So should you be worried right now? Should I be worried? Um, no. But should we be aware that the entire region is tectonically alive? Um, yes. And not only that, it's both inland and coastal zones are under slow but steady stress. So guys, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, leave this video a like, subscribe, and check out the videos in the end screen because there's interesting stuff. There's a new lake that has formed on top of the mountain where the glacier was in Platten. If that comes down, new problems will arise. So if you want to support the channel, I have a buymeacoffee.com slash silky site. The link is in the description of this video. Go there if you want to support the channel. And if you buy me a coffee, leave a message. I can answer with a 30 second video message. You can video message me back so we can actually talk. I think that's, that's a great page. So check it out. Link is in the description of this video. Thank you for watching guys. Thank you for being channel members. If you want to join, join button, link in the description. Thanks for your supers. Thanks for your comments. Thanks for watching. Be safe. Bye-bye.